In this video, we're getting hands-on with the brand new Longines Conquest 38 millimeters. We're comparing it to the previous variant coming in at 41 millimeters, all the specs and what you need to know. And also at the end, we'll be talking about why I think this is the most affordable alternative to the Rolex Datejust. Before we start this video, I was looking through my stats the other day and realized that 81% of you that watch these videos haven't yet subscribed. And that has dropped from 82% to 81. And that's so amazing. Thank you guys so much that have subscribed. If you haven't, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And today I have a box. I have a, I have a big box. It's almost exciting when I have a box because in the box is normally some pretty special watches. There's some watches in here that I'm not allowed to talk about yet and that's coming very, very soon. So turn that bell on. But there's also some watches in here that are brand new to Longines. And let's just talk about Longines for a second. Last year, Longines released banger after banger after banger. I mean, they started the year off strong or very strong with the Longines Hydra Conquest GMT. And then they released the Longines Conquest Chrono. Then they released the Longines Conquest. And now they're releasing the Longines Conquest 38 millimeters, which is this watch. I feel like Longines follow quite a predictable pattern in the watch industry. They release an absolute banger, everyone loves it, and then they just make it even better. They refine it, they refine the specs and the straps and all that kind of stuff. And that would be amazing to see from Amiga, for example. I mean, I'd love to see an Amiga Seamaster in 39 millimeters, that would be epic. Anyways, I digress massively. Let's get onto this watch. So the new Conquest comes in five different color variations. You have the champagne or gold version. You have the silver version. You have a green, an olive green, which by the way, is epic. You then have a blue and a kind of charcoaly black variant. Now the only color variant that they haven't carried through from the 41 is that chocolate brown model. They've actually replaced this with the champagne gold model, which I personally am quite upset about. I was a huge fan of the, the chocolate brown model. I know that other people maybe weren't, but I kind of was. These new models, of course, come in at 38 millimeters, comparatively to the previous versions that came in at 41 millimeters. And they wear so much nicer on the wrist. In my opinion, I've got 6.5 inch wrists to the previous variant. And I think there's a reason for this. When watches don't use bezels or they use extremely, extremely limited bezels, it expands and makes the face look a little bit more chunky. Now this chunkiness makes it look bigger on the wrist despite it not actually being bigger. So even though they've slimmed this down and, and, and kind of minimized it that little bit, three millimeters if my maths serves me right, it still looks that little bit bigger. This actually looks about 39 millimeters in my opinion, but it does wear a lot better in my opinion for having smaller wrists than the 41 mil variant. The thickness of this model is pretty damn incredible. It comes in at 10.9 mil in thickness, and I'm just looking at it at the moment. It's super, super thin. But what's weird about that is that the previous version at 41 millimeters also came in at 10.9 millimeters, which made it look even better, the previous version that is. So I don't know why they haven't made it thinner because they've been able to make that case size smaller. I suppose it's to do with the movement, but we'll move on to that in a second. The lug to lug on this model comes in at 46.8 millimeters. Whereas the lug to lug on the previous version comes in at 49.10 millimeters. So there's definitely a significant uh, difference in the sizing of these models. So just bear that in mind when you have a look at them. I wouldn't say that 6.5 inch wrists is too small for the 41 mil variant. I think it just goes back to personal preference on that front. The case and the bracelet of these models come in stainless steel and the stainless steel has a combination of polished and brushed, which I'm reflecting it in the light at the moment, just looks absolutely incredible. This is more of a dress watch. It's less of a sports watch, more of a dress watch. And the reason being, in my opinion, is that that stainless steel that's in polished is a scratch magnet. It will get scratched very easily. And if you're like me and have OCD and also ADHD, also dyslexia, I've just got everything to be, to be honest, but I do have big OCD when it comes to my watches and scratches on polished metal, I know that that would frustrate me just a little bit. This isn't the kind of watch that you would take up a hill or uh, to the climbing gym or to the gym in general. It's more of a special occasions watch, a work watch. The glass on these watches is sapphire crystal glass and the sapphire crystal glass has anti-reflective coating on both sides. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that's a bad thing, but hear me out. It's not, it honestly isn't. 
Anti-reflective coating is that little bit softer than sapphire crystal glass. So people are right in their assumption that that will scratch sooner or quicker or easier than the sapphire crystal glass. However, I have a watch, I'm not gonna say the watch because you guys know, I have a watch that has anti-reflective coating on both sides. I've had it for years. I've taken it up hills. I've taken it to the gym, I've taken it to the climbing gym. I've taken it everywhere with me and I don't have one scratch on it. So I think that worry isn't really valid in my opinion. And remember that the same group that own Amiga also own Longines, it's Swatch Group. So the likelihood is the glass and anti-reflective coating that they'll be using is the same, if not very similar. Going back to the bracelet on this watch, it has a really, really nice taper to it. And the clasp at the bottom is a butterfly clasp. So you can see that it has two parts there. The only frustration that I have with this is when you put one side down, it needs to be in a certain order that you put the butterfly clasp back together, if that makes sense. You can't put the, from the way I'm looking at it, right side down and then the left. You have to put the left side down and then the right, which is frustrating because I have, at the moment, a Tissot PRX on, my green Tissot PRX, and the butterfly clasp on this, you can put it down any way you want. I think in terms of speed, that's just, it's really nice. It just kind of makes sense. And on that note, I suppose it's time for the wrist check. What is on your wrist today? Please let me know in the comments. I, of course, as I just said, I'm wearing the Tissot PRX green dial. I've kind of fallen back in love with it, weirdly speaking, because I don't wear it that often. But when I do, it's good. When we flip this watch round, we can see that it actually has an open case back. And before we get onto the open case back and what's beneath the open case back, let's talk about the colors. And let's talk about the dials because they're awesome. Now, my personal favorite is the one I'm holding at the moment. So this is the almost olive green dial and the sunray pattern running through this is absolutely beautiful. Now the hands and the hour markers are in silver. They're kind of a um, polished silver, highly polished silver, and that reflects and sort of contrasts wonderfully to that dial. At the six o'clock mark, you of course have a date window. And I love six o'clock date windows. Um, and the reason that I love them is because symmetry. It creates symmetry, it looks symmetrical, it draws the eye to the middle of the watch instead of to one side. And as a photographer, that's kind of what I do. I balance things, I balance lighting, I balance the camera angles, I balance things out with stuff because I know it looks just better to look at. So this looks damn good to look at. Now, I know I'm kind of just contradicting myself because I've got a Tissot PRX on, but the Tissot PRX does not come in at 2000 pounds and this does. Another color that really surprised me, uh, of matter of fact, was the black dial. It's more of a charcoaly black, and typically I think that black dials are kind of boring in a lot of ways. Actually, I think they're really boring, but this one doesn't seem to be. The sunray dial running through it gives it a flash of life, and you just need to see it in the flesh before you make your decision. And on that note, if you want to see it in the flesh, come into your local Chisholm Hunter. We were official stockists of Longines watches. I would really appreciate it. And if you do purchase from Chisholm Hunter, you are supporting the channel, and you guys know that that means a lot to me. The actual lug distance of this watch comes in at 19 millimeters, whereas the 41 mil variant, the, the, the previous variant, comes in at 21 millimeters. Again, we can see the kind of difference in sizing in the case there. The crown is a screw down crown, and this gives the watch a water resistance of 100 meters. Just capping on that dial, because I've been jumping around like mad in this review, so I do apologize. ADHD is just getting, getting ahead of me. Something that is just really attractive to this dial, the, the, the Rolex date just doesn't have, and this is something I'll come on to in a second, that inner disc just in from the bezel in a different kind of gloss finish to the Sunray dial, giving a ton of contrast, it just adds such a layer of depth to me and it makes it look so much more premium than if it was just flat. If it was just flat, it'd just be like, a little bit boring. The movement of this watch is of course visible through the open case back. And the movement of this watch is the caliber L888. And it has a self-winding mechanical movement beating at 25,200 VPH. It also has a monocrystalline silicon balance spring and an approximate power reserve of 72 hours. Now this model as a full package comes in at 2,000 pounds. And I genuinely believe that this is the best alternative, affordable alternative to the Rolex Datejust. I mean, let's talk about the Rolex Datejust for a second. It's beautiful, it's lovely, it's simplistic, but to me, it maybe lacks a little bit of oomph. Whereas this, 
it has those little splashes that give it that oomph. For example, the six o'clock date window instead of the three o'clock date window. For example, that disc sort of inlay on the dial, that circular disc inlay on the dial. These little features just add so much more. Not to mention the fact that you can see the beating heart of this watch through the open case back. Like a Rolex date just is, oh, I don't know, about 6,500 pounds, 7,500 pounds, if you can get it new. This is 2,000 pounds. It's unbelievable quality. Longines have been crushing it all year, every year for the last five years straight. I just think this is probably the best affordable alternative that you can find on the market anywhere at the moment. And on that note, I've rambled far too much. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button or follow our Instagram at Chisholm Hunter Watches or my Instagram at HP Life Ends. Remember, we do have our very own podcast, um, which is the at Into The Mind podcast or just Into The Mind podcast. We also have tons of stuff in this, in this goodie bag of uh, our goodie box, which is coming very soon. So hit the bell. We'll see you soon.